Good morning, everybody. So welcome back to our own Jana show, where we take questions directly from our public. And I'm your host, Neeram. So today we picked up a topic about mind shift. And uh, we have our uh, fantastic panelist, Jyoti Bharadwaj, Anshu Khare, and Anusha. We all will be talking about how you can shift your mind with some specific patterns, some specific uh, exercises. So let me begin talking to our one of our panelists, Anusha, who will be talking about how a thought in your mind can impact uh, your life. Anusha, over to you. Yes, thank you, Nirav. And uh, in today's life, it is very much important to shift our mindset from negative thoughts to positive thoughts. It is really very much important even for an unborn baby also, which is growing there inside the mother's womb, and for the pregnant lady also to think positive, even throughout their pregnancy journey, right? I'm dealing with uh, pregnant women. I'm dealing with the Garb Sanskar, and we are practicing a lot of exercises in Garb Sanskar also, in the sessions also, to shift the mindset from negative thoughts to positive thoughts. And in our daily life, do you know about 60,000 to 70,000 thoughts come into our mind? And in that, 80%, about 80% is negative. It is impacting our daily life directly or indirectly. We are uh, leading a negative uh, lifestyle. See, this is very important to shift from negative to positive. Then how to shift? How to shift the thoughts from negative to positive it is really very important. And uh, meditation comes into picture in this. And uh, if we meditate daily on a daily basis, we can actually shift the negative thought process to positive thought process. And it is very much important. And we should stop the negative chatter which is going on in our mind. Every uh, day, in uh, every second, our mind will be like chatter, chatter, chatter. Everywhere chatter will be going on in our minds. And about 80% is negative, right? We should stop those chatter first and then start shifting the mindset from negative to positive. And meditation is one of the things which comes into picture and we should practice meditation on a daily basis to shift our mindset from negative to positive. And over to you, Anshu. Thank you so much, uh, Anusha, for, uh, you know, thought process of meditating and getting rid of that negative chatter you talk about and mind shift is uh, uh, depositing uh, the positive thoughts. And I want to really highlight uh, why this negative thing comes into play in our mind is because uh, human by nature is reactive, you know, uh, uh, during the old stone age, or even if you see the animal, uh, the biology uh, triangle, Always there is a fear in our mind by getting dominated or eaten up by somebody who is superior to us. So even in animals, if you will see, the deer will always, always be scared uh, of getting eaten up by a lion. And he only once knows that I have to run fast in order to save myself. And just to save, just to get that survival, we have a kind of a mind uh, set uh, which is more resonating with maybe negative thoughts. Yeah, sometimes it boosts your morale uh, that you just run, you know, and but uh, sometimes it brings that reactive approach, uh, those negative impact which keeps on hammering in our mind. And of course, uh, uh, being human by nature, as we say, uh, you know, uh, in Hindi also there's a proverb which talks about ki dood ka jala charge uh, be fuk fuk ke pita hai. That means if you are burned by a hot pot of milk, uh, you even if a child is given a glass of water, uh, he'll be afraid uh, of taking the water in the same glass uh, from which he got burnt. 
So likewise, uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, those negative feeling, those negative emotion, though it bring a kind of a learning in your life, but when you keep on thinking and investing it, multiplying it, will induce negativity in your life take learning which is appropriate from your failure from those negative instances but then try to make an effort consciously to move ahead and inculcate positive thoughts within yourself so the moment you inculcate positive thoughts within yourself you will get more power you will get more people to interact and i would like to really share my own example when i got laid off I was a kind of a person who, who lost faith on everything. Why? Because I uh, just had my job as a crown on my head. And it was an unconscious, not that because of, uh, because of the position or the salary which I was getting, just because I devoted my life into it. And the moment I lose it, I lost uh, the uh, you know, ability to just live my own life. And to a level where I had a reduced hemoglobin level. So can you beat it? In today's world, when people think and get into a negative pattern of thinking, they go to such an extent to kill their own self. You know, so that's where I'm saying. And when I actually introduce a kind of a mechanism for myself where I could get to buddy with people, when I created my own vision and my mission in life, I get more people in my life. I got this group all together, which motivated me to keep on excelling towards uh, the brighter tomorrow. Now I'm more hopeful than what I was a few months back. So to be honest, I really recommend the youth and every individual out there to create a journal for themselves because sometimes it is very easy to recollect those negative instances in your life. But if I will tell you today, uh, go back and just Think of something which is very positive in your life. You will really take a second or so to really think what positive things have gone in your life. So I would really urge to get yourself updated with your accomplishment and your capabilities that, hey, Anshu, you are capable of doing much more than whatever had been laid off. Okay, but you have established innovation framework, quality framework and what not you have done you still have capability. So when you tell yourself like this, you will achieve more. So even if you are forgetting, I would recommend create a kind of uh, an accomplishment wall uh, in your own, own home or library, whatever feels comfortable for you to really put that up or create a kind of a journal for your own self where you can go and check your about your positive points, where your kids can also go later on and check what beautiful work you have done. So I would really urge it's not just for you know personal satisfaction, but to always boost your confidence in your lows also that you are much capable and individual uh, of whatever you know uh, situations may prove you at that point of time. So never give yourself to those situations. And with that, I feel it's more about inculcating uh, that love within yourself to, to really give you that kind of a boost. And with that, I would really want to pass on to uh, Jyoti. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, for this great insight which you just shared. And um, so coming on to loving yourself, as I've been talking about this in the past also, I would like to begin it from, you know, where I left it. And we talked about the exercise, uh, a small exercise to look into the mirror and uh, saying, I love to love you to yourself. Now, when you look into the mirror, when I say look into the mirror, I mean, you are in your, you're looking into your eyes and your eyes are the soul. They're, they're the window to your soul. So you're communicating with your own soul when you're looking into the mirror. And when you say, I love you, I love you is a very, very powerful statement. And normally, um, you know, when, when we talk about this uh, um, uh, statement, it's, um, 
very much camouflaged in a you know cinematic world or theatrical world or a print media and this is how we also perceive as humans you know and it's very casually or commonly used sometimes you know in our day-to-day uh, -day conversations but I want to ask you know uh, the viewers or I want to ask each one of you when you say I love you to somebody does it carry any weightage does it does it really come out from your heart do you really mean it when you say I love you to somebody and um, or do you just say it you know when when somebody says I love you so does it mean hey I possess you or I ha, yeah I own you you know when I say I love you no you do not that's a wrong statement and uh, sometimes you know a person says uh, oh I love Da, 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 this person more than myself or um, or you say I can't live without you come on people why do you say that that you cannot live without somebody else or you cannot you cannot be uh, just going um, beyond yourself and loving somebody else you cannot do that you need to first of all love yourself coming back to the own thing so which means when you are uh, either with a partner or in a family you know you're a unit when you're in a unit so either you're being dependent on a partner or you're being dependent on your family members and uh, this is where the dependency begins and here we're talking about breaking the dependency patterns when you talk about the dependency it could be the mental dependency it could be the emotional dependency or it could be uh, let's say the physical dependency so when i say mental dependency that's right, you know, when you are, uh, you have to take some major decisions in your life, then of course, as a unit, as a, as a family, or uh, as a couple, you take a decision to go further in your life, and you take those major decisions, you need to sit down, come with your own uh, thought process, and you have to discuss it, and then you come on to that decision. But if you go like, I cannot think about the other person, you know, I cannot have any solutions to my uh, small little problems also, you know, on a day-to-day -day, uh, daily uh, issues also. You, you are being dependent, mentally dependent on that person, right? So you, you start to feel uh, the, the hollowness starts to begin from there only that, you know, I'm not capable enough. Or let's talk, talk about uh, the physical aspect of it you feel you need to see a person 24 seven or you are so dependent on the person that, you know, um, you, you, you start to say that, you know, I need to see uh, the person uh, more often, or, you know, I cannot function. My mind and heart cannot function without that person. Again, it's a wrong way to lead your life. You know, you cannot do that. Each individual is here to perform their tasks, their duties, their responsibilities. You cannot be clingy to a person and you cannot call that. Uh, you know, being obsessive, being uh, um, over possessive about somebody, you cannot call it a statement like, you know, you love the person. And uh, of course, that's a dependency and that's, uh, you know, a physical dependency. And then when you talk about the emotional dependency, you are not in a situation to handle the crisis and I would again say the day-to-day -day crisis or some issues which you say, you know, uh, or you need a shoulder to cry on, you know, somebody else's shoulder through all the time. And you say you cannot um, do without that person and not uh, take care of your own self. Then again, you are being dependent on somebody. It's and it's a uh, in in all these three aspects, in all these three ways. If you're being dependent on somebody then sorry, it's not, uh, you're not justifying this statement that, you know, you love somebody. So I say, when you are an individual, you complete yourself and contribute either in a marriage or in a family or in a unit, in whatever unit you are in, a community, society, wherever. You need to be a complete person in yourself to con con contribute and then then make yourself an independent personality and come up as a, you know, a great contributor. And this is where the self-love begins. And I say, uh, a broken heart will only attract a broken heart. A fragmented soul will only attract a fragmented soul. So there, when you work on yourself, after you have really introspected all these aspects, 
come back, come back to your mirror, come back to the mirror exercise, and then say out loud, I love you. See the better version of yourself and fall in love with yourself once again for better. That's the message for today. And I feel uh, for that, for again, as he began, you know, the mind, mind shift, everybody has to, you know, look at the mind shift and how one has to proceed onto the mind shift. You first of all have to build in that uh, willingness to have that mind shift. And from, the, from the, that willingness comes the faith that I can, I will be able to. So uh, you have to believe in yourself to change it because that, again, uh, that element is present in every human being. You just have to awaken that. And to awaken that, you have to have great faith in oneself and the divinity. And for that, I think, um, Nirav is the perfect person to talk about it. He has to uh, talk a lot about faith today. So over to you, Nirav. Thank you, Jyoti. Um, and I think it has been a great uh, conversation and our, our uh, audience definitely will take back a lot of uh, things from this discussion. So when we talked about the faith, um, I think there are some questions which we should ask ourselves that do I believe or do I have a faith in me? Do I have a faith in the God or the Almighty I believe in? Do I have a faith or, or believe in the family? Do they support me for everything I do? Do I have a faith when, when I start something, will I be able to finish it also? All right. So uh, what my message uh, to the audiences have faith in yourself and at any point of time you feel that uh, hey I'm feeling low today and uh, I feel doubt in myself that I wouldn't be able to do this no matter what or if I pick a course if I pick a book if I pick a project I always feel doubt in myself that will I be able to do it or not so my recommendation to everybody is Whenever you have such doubt, self-doubt come into your mind and thinking that I wouldn't be able to do it, just ask these questions. Am I, do I have a faith in me? And if you get that answer right, no matter what, you are going to crush whatever thing you pick up, whatever task you take it, or whatever, uh, whatever dealings you have it. So believe in yourself, have a faith in yourself, and you will see the world around you will change. So that's the message which I wanted to share it with the group. And um, so uh, thank you so much uh, for our audience uh, to be patient and listening to us. And I'm sure you are going to take a lot of information, a lot of exercise, which you can uh, put it, or you can apply to yourself and you will grow from there. So um, I would like to see if there are any closing comments from our panelists. So let's check. Uh, Anshu, do you want to share any closing comment? Yes, uh, Nirav, and it, it seems to be an amazing show today because uh, the topic itself has resonated uh, from, uh, from where the child, you know, uh, comes into inception till the youth and adolescent to adult. Uh, a mind shift is very important in life, you see. And uh, with what kind of mindset a child is born, you know, given by their parents, where the person, the child do not have a control. So we as adults need to really understand when we go for this beautiful journey by bringing a kind of a new member in our family, the mind shift is very important. You need to be very positive, as Anusha said. And there are more than 16,000 thoughts which comes uh, to us are negative in nature. We need to be very cautious about what we are thinking, uh, at least uh, over the span where you're going to start a new family. Second, when it comes to, yes, rearing a child also, because they are growing up, they will learn and reflect uh, seeing us also. And when they become youth, they are just your mirror image. And that's where I say that. Create an accomplishment wall because your children will is going to check about uh, what my parents have achieved. You know, if in case you keep those negative memory with you, they will actually look at those negative memory. So 
everything you build around your house and around your children should be that positive where they get inspiration to move ahead. And that's where love comes in picture because when they grow up uh, to a level, uh, you know, when, when they start their own family, as Jyoti has mentioned, they will resonate. They will make more friends, more beautiful groups, community, and end up in a relationship which is more positive so that we get more positive people. And of course, faith, faith drives everything. Faith is like a clock of life. So yes, with faith, I think uh, the Jana show has uh, really given an awesome tip to the, the varied set of people across. Uh, so I, I wish everybody uh, all the best in the journey and keeping the faith on, I would really want to pass it on to Neera for closing comments, Neera. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Anshu. And I think you summarized the show very well. And uh, thank you everybody for joining in today and see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.